So the next thing I'd like to discuss is how you take the needs, your spatial needs, and combine them with the shape of the structure. And a really nice tool for doing that is called a bubble diagram. The first thing you'll want to do is make a list of the spaces that you want inside your home or garage or barn or whatever type of structure you're building. So if it were a home, you would say kitchen, dining room, living room, bedroom, bathroom. So I'm gonna make a quick list for us to cross-reference. Once you have a list that feels like it fulfills all of your needs, then you can start to size those different spaces. So if I'm looking at my list, <clears throat> I live in Maine, so I know that I need some kind of an entryway to my house because when I walk in the door, I'm definitely tracking mud. There's just always mud. It doesn't matter what season it is or it's snow. So I want, a, I want an enclosed entry. It doesn't need to be very big. I love to cook. And so when I walk into my home, I want to walk right into the kitchen because I'm always carrying a couple of big heavy bags of groceries and I want to just plunk them right down. I really like to spend a lot of time in my kitchen, so I'm making it as big as I can imagine. I love to sit around a wood stove and a fireplace, so I think I want to have some kind of a living room that doesn't have a TV in it. And although I don't need a separate dining room, since I love to cook, I do want a place to have a nice table to sit down and eat. So I'm going to make my dining room sort of part of my kitchen. So my two circles or bubbles are going to overlap. My husband absolutely loves to watch football. I'm not even going to tell you what kind of a fan he is because I don't want to turn anyone off. But we have to be able to watch football. So I'm going to give him a very small den in which he can have a giant flat screen TV. <laughs> And he is a school teacher, so uh, he does a lot of work at home, and I would love for him to come home to do the work rather than staying at school, so we'll have an office also in our house. But we probably want the office to be a little further away from the raucous chaos and excitement and constant party that's occurring in the kitchen, so we'll put the office a little further away. And of course, we need at least one bathroom. So these are the needs that I have for my first floor. And I'm going to adjust them. And I'm gonna have my husband do this bubble diagram also so that we can make sure that we're sizing the rooms appropriately. I can all but guarantee you that the den is going to be larger. <laughs> Once we have our basic sizes proportionate to each other, we will start to create a shape around that. And that's when our building starts to become a gable, a, tri a, a triangle. That's when our building starts to take shape and becomes a square or a rectangle and we can really start to think about posts and actual sizes and so on. But you want to do this bubble diagram several times over to ensure that you don't overlook something and to ensure that you have the appropriate connection between the various rooms in terms of how you like to live and where you like to eat your breakfast and your dinner and, and so on. And then you can move on to tying in how the house is situated on your property and what kind of light is hitting the various rooms. So we'll leave that as it is for now, but I just wanted to touch on that design component um, before you get run away with your timber framing. Hey there, thank you for watching. Here at Shelter Institute in Woolwich, Maine, we teach a wide variety of house building and timber framing and carving classes. We'd love to see you here, but if you can't make it to Maine to take one of our classes, our online class is available at shelterinstitute.com.